Get on board. Get on board. Get on board, get on board, get on board, get on board. ship of Zion. Get on board. My friends, there are many cultures that did not have a written language. And in order for history or any moral truths to be told, they would use whatever animals or objects were at hand to tell stories. Now, I'm sure many of you adults have heard the stories of Bra Rabbit. I'm sure you've heard Aesop's fables where foxes and birds and turtles come to life. Walt Disney even used it in Bambi, a deer that could talk, or a little uh, skunk named Thumper. Uh, no, the rabbit was Thumper. I forgot what the skunk's name was. Who? Flower. That's his name. <laughs> Jesus also used objects that were at hand to tell stories that his hearers would understand. There was a deeper meaning to what he was saying. And we call these the parables because they pointed to something beyond what was really said. And as we look at the 13th chapter of Matthew, we find these verse beginning at verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what is sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown in good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruits and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. That was the end of the parable. And Jesus continues on with what he's doing. And the disciples, like many of us, when we hear theological treaties, we sit there like we understand it. I don't know about you, but I did when I was down at the cemetery. <coughs> I would listen to professors of Old Testament and New Testament talk about things and subjects, and I didn't have a clue what they were talking about. I had nothing with which to anchor myself to understand what they were talking about. And so it went in one ear and out the other. I, I had nothing to 
put it in. I had no receptacle for what they were trying to teach. Many of us today, when we come into God's house and we hear theological stories and treat, we don't have anything to put it in. We just let it go in one ear and let it come out of the other. And so it was with the disciples. I remember when I graduated high school, Alda and, and Jasmine, the furniture company uptown gave every girl a Lane jewelry box. How many of you got those? Okay, you remember them. And it was a wonderful little cedar chest that we could put our favorite things in, whether it was a necklace, a ring, a love letter, or a rock that our boyfriends gave us, just whatever it was, we could put in these little boxes. We had something in which to put something in. I can remember the boys had little bags with strings on them. And what do you think they kept in there? Marbles. And if they had a cat's eye, oh man, they were something else. And they had something in which to put the marbles. Every year about this time, Granny would be in the kitchen with that big pot a lot of mason jars, and you know what she was doing? She was putting up for the winter string beans and tomatoes and cucumbers. She had something in which to put something in. Receptacles. You and I are to be the receptacles for the Word of God. But we have to be willing to receive that word, allow that word to, to marinate within us, that we may in turn share that word with someone else, that we may in turn live out that word, not just on Sunday, not just when somebody is looking, but every day. We are to receive and live out the Word of God. Little boy one day had been as bad as he could be, and his mama sent him to his room, said, now you go to your room and you stay there until you can act right. And the little boy went to the room and the mama yelled, and get out on your knees and pray, and ask God to make you a better boy. Little boy went in his room, he colored for a while, he read a book for a while, he kicked some things for a while, and finally he decided, maybe I better get down on my knees and pray. And so the little boy gets down on his knees, and he begins to pray, Dear God, if you can, make me a better boy. But Lord, if you can't, it's okay, because I'm having fun just like I am. <laughs> Sometimes we are like that. We are not ready to receive the Word of God. We are not ready to live out the Word of God. And so it goes in one ear and out the other because our receptacles aren't there. We aren't being receptive. Some people say, well, I didn't get nothing out of the service this morning. My response to that is you need to examine the container that you brought to get something in. Amen. Sometimes we come into God's house to hear God's word through scripture, sermon, or song. And we are almost like one of those colanders. You know what you put stuff in? You sprinkle water over it and it just washes through the bottom. We need to be receptacles of God's truth, God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy, and in turn, show it to others. The disciples were much like church folk. They didn't understand what Jesus was talking about, but they waited until they got him to themselves and then they said to him, explain to us the parable of the weeds 
in the field? And he answered this, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire and there there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the righteous shall shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let everyone who hears listen. So be it, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.